Hello everyone, and welcome back once again to Outer Wilds. We're heading back once again to Ember Twin in search of this fossil that can maybe teach us a little bit more about the so-called, what I assume is the anglerfish that comes with one of these bramble seeds burrowed deep into the earth of our home planet, Timber Hearth. Now, that fossil is not the only reason we're returning here to Ember Twin. Uh, for reasons I'll try and explain as I go. See, this series is being made a little bit differently from previous ones. If you think back to Darkwood, for as much as I love that game, it took six months to make. And so, like I said before, I'm trying to avoid that by pre-recording and pre-editing a bunch of these so that by the time you start to see the series, a whole bunch of them are already done. Right now, I'm recording the fifth part. I've already edited one and two. Now, the disadvantage to that is that I'm not able to look at comments in real time, and you guys are often really helpful. The advantage is that I can sort of see myself play a little bit as I go, and that allows me to be like, oh wait, I forgot about that thing earlier. I never followed up on that. So, what I'm doing right now is I'm going back into the caves where the Nomai first arrived from. When they first got to this planet, I mean. Because I never went down that horrifying cave that was talked about. Do not follow this tunnel to its end. Coleus and I will examine the horror that lies at its terminus later, provided we live through this. Now, I was thinking, after a while, that maybe that was the room with the quantum rock. But there's another one over there that says, interesting rocks this way. We never really did examine these caves. I just kind of assumed that I had found other things about them later on. Those stalagmites and stalactites look suspiciously like teeth. Oh. Is that an anglerfish? Worse, the bones of one. Oh, look, when we send the scout in, we can only briefly get a glimpse of it, but the photo is forever. At least until I retrieve the scout. Is that perhaps the fossil? There's no my writing in there, so there must be some way to get in there. Okay, never mind. I didn't even need to talk about how I'm going off on a detour. It's not really a detour at all. Okay, nothing in here but rocks. Let's try this. This is a detour. Oh no, it really is rocks. Okay. I'm hoping that by progressing further into this cave, maybe we'll be able to find something. Last time it was filling up with sand. Enormous cavern, blah blah blah. So if we go through here, that will be leading to what eventually became the Sunken City. I'm almost tempted to just jump down to save the time, but... Oh, we haven't actually examined their initial path yet. There could be more to learn. Oh, I actually feel like such a fool for not doing this sooner. The path to the shelter site is somewhat convoluted. So follow the instructions ahead closely. Okay, just have to do some platforming to get to it. No risk at all. To reach the shelter site, walk forward until you meet the sandfall at the pit. Then turn left. Continue to the room filled with rock column formations and climb upward through the opening above them. The sand here is rising, so you must be cautious but swift. Uh, there is more below, is there not? Maybe this is just here to fill, but I want to see what's down here. We definitely don't have a lot of time on this one. Here's some sand fill. Oh, there's got to be something down here. I feel like I'm burying myself. Nope, 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 nope. You can't climb up that way. Up, 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 up. There we are. But I don't think that actually helps us at all. I think we've just made our way back around to the same chamber. Alright. I had to know. 
Not actually a ton of oxygen either. See, it gave me instructions, but also I want to see everything, so... Told me to go past the sand pit and take a left. Let's reorient. I never look up. There we are. This means the Nomai must have had some kind of jetpack technology, too. Or a ladder. Archaeologists are still debating that. Be cautious crossing the chasm ahead. The bridge Mallory and I crafted will do its job, but it isn't strong. Okay, and right here we can actually see the settings we have in action. If you look over there, you'll see that the sandfall has actually stopped while we're not moving. It's almost like super hot, but for reading. Once on the far side, look for the tunnel. Hidden behind the falling sand. Follow it and you'll reach the, sel the shelter site. Okay. There is also over here. Yep, jetpack lead the way. Uh, hidden behind it, eh? Ah, good spot. You're doing well. <laughs> Thank you, encouraging sign. There's only a little farther left to go now until you reach the shelter site. You can rest there. Hurry before the sand comes. Uh... all that sand down there. I will actually want to explore that at some point. But first, this is probably the way it wants me to go, right? Or perhaps not. Uh, oh no, perhaps yes? Wait. Am I stuck? No. We can continue forward, yes. We're here. Oh, that was a thing all along? Wait, does this lead to where we entered? No. This is not the same as our previous entrance. This is amazing. Look inside the cave. How did this come to rest here? We haven't encountered others in these caves. I think this is a rare find. Wait, is it? Yes, it is. An update. We need to find a way inside quickly, Melloray. Because when I returned here to search for an entrance to the cave, there were children playing on the specimen. Your children, or the ghosts of an even older civilization? From what we can see, Coleus and I believe the specimen must be very old indeed. Imagine what we might learn if we could examine it. We both agree it's unlikely this dry planet is this horror's place of origin especially considering what we observed during the vessel's evacuation. Which is on Dark Bramble, I believe. Clearly this hole is too small for it to have fit through. Hypothesis, there's another entrance to this cave. If there is, Coleus and I will find it. We can't leave valuable information undiscovered. I share the sentiment. You know, a lot of games will have an ancient alien race as you explore, and their writings will often be filled with such gravitas and, you know, almost biblical writing style. I really like having this group that I can almost kind of relate to that's not so dissimilar from our own group back on Timber Hearth. But here we are. We've been here before. But before we do anything else, I need to refill on oxygen. Thank you. I believe we got all this already. But I don't quite recall if we saw what you did. Anglerfish Overlook District. Oh, they're a map. Eye Shrine District. There's potentially so much more here. If we raise you... Oh, you'll show us! There's so much more to this place! I've been here so many times! This was all right around me? Okay, Anglerfish Overlook. Let's get exploring. No scrolls here. Oh, we are going to spend so much more time here. 
so much more time. This is where we came in from, actually. It was just so dark before. Oh, that looks dangerous. This is just back around to here. Oh, there's so many of them in here. This was truly an apocalyptic event. Uh, okay, how do we how do we get into here? There's something there, but I can't see a way in. Maybe our only bet for now is going to be to try and take that elevator over the cactus. seems to be the case. Maybe we can drop down over there. Yes, I think that sand hides the way in. Yep. Ow! 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 Let me up! Let me up! Let me up! Fix that suit puncture. Okay. Are we inside? I'm not sure, but the sand is beginning to rise. That's not a good thing. I think I may have just trapped myself. Yep. Up and over. Up and over. Okay, we need to run now, but we'll definitely be coming back here first thing in our next life cycle. In the meantime, maybe there's still more we can explore on the surface. Actually, getting out of here may not be possible. We may have already screwed ourselves, sealed ourselves in. Yep, that's it for us. That is it for us, unless... Unless we fly out of here same way as before. Main entrance, baby. Next time, we're gonna light this whole city up. Don't make the mistake of falling into the ghost matter. Oh, it's sometimes good to have come back after you've already explored. It enables you to make the most of your new findings and run back with well, all the time and shortcuts possible. Oh yeah, no, we, we saw this. But I'm not sure we got this. Let's read this first so that we know we have it. Quantum Moon Locator is functioning. We have markers for each of the places the moon goes. Anona, Burr? I just observed the Quantum Moon in orbit around Dark Bramble. I added a marker for Dark Bramble. I thought the Locator now accounted for all of the Phantom Moon's locations, but sometimes the Locator can't tell where the moon is. Perhaps there's a problem with the device? It's also possible there exists a sixth place in this star system to which the Phantom Moon travels. You have keen eyes, my friend. So this moon travels to a total of five locations, not four. Okay, so this is them working out where it can actually appear. Interesting. So we can use this if we want to hunt it down. I think we're about to reach the supernova music. Chert's research notes. Property of Chert. Clearly the Nomai were making astronomical observations here. They chose an excellent spot. I said that as a superlative, but now I see they mean that literally. What is this big rotating device for? What is it the Nomai were observing? I'd posit there's something special about the orange symbol on the device. Hal and the new astronaut's translator tool would be nice to have handy about now. I knew this was looking for something more. So that's the quantum moon locator. And occasionally it does catch on it. Right now it's right over there, yes. So we were right about what it is. 
but we can't seem to touch it. Or at least we've failed every time we've tried. Our ship isn't all that far away, so let's take off. I don't think we'll be able to go for it. Especially now that we've taken our eyes off of it. But I'm actually... You know, for as little as survival matters, sometimes surviving something crazy does feel really cool in this game. Let's go. Right now it's around Brittle Hollow. Um, if we can escape the sun... Come on. There we go. Wait, are we already wearing our suit? Let's try this. And it disappears the instant we touch it. Well, that's a little lame. Then again, we don't really understand the full nature of it. I mean, why does it disappear on contact? And why were the Nomai so interested in this thing? Well, we might as well get front row seats, right? Let's go. If I fall into this thing, it's basically a case of you can't fire me, I quit. Alright, give me your worst. In fact, I'm heading towards you. We were the first. I have noticed that it does take longer to reach you if you're actually at one of the farther stars, or systems, sorry. I keep, I keep using stars and planets interchangeably, and it's really annoying me. <laughs> Look, <laughs> the Nomai are just watching confused, like you, you flew into a supernova. <laughs> We've given you this incredible gift of regeneration, and you're using it to literally hurl yourself into the sun. Dude, you will never guess what I've been doing. You know what happens if we do doze off? Uh, no, 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 no. Okay, time does actually advance. So we can sleep at campsites. I'm not sure at this moment why we'd want to wait. All right, uh, we're going to investigate this place because we haven't actually been here yet. And I'm worried that I might have accidentally waited too long to go investigate the sunken city, but we are definitely going to do that again. Yes, guys, it's going to be another Ember Twin episode. Uh, but we've got to get out and repair our ship first thing. Damaged our landing camera, our landing gear. I think that's about all. Wasn't anything essential. There's a tablet somewhere, which we'll need to reclaim. Probably down there. This has got to be meant to either transmit or receive some kind of signal, right? The Sunless City. Does it point in its direction, or is it another entrance? This door will need to remain closed for some time. Pi and I are running an experiment based on the extraordinary findings from the White Hole Station. An update. The High Energy Lab is now being used to design the Ash Twin Project. If you're here to help, or even just to observe, be sure to use the Sunless City path to the lab, so there is a way around through the city. Raimi and I will be running this experiment until one of us, specifically me, can prove the other wrong. So although it's inconvenient, the lab currently can only be accessed by the path from the Sunless City. Inviting sand inside would disrupt our setup, 
and could have enormous consequences. We realize this is an intriguing prospect, but the door must remain closed nonetheless. I like how they have to warn that their warning is to be taken seriously and not an opportunity to do something cool. Now, if we come down here, it looks like we can follow that cord coming out of there. Ghost matter? Yeah, that's what I thought. Can we maybe fly up and over? Probably not, right? Down here leads to the crash site caves. And this leads to the sunless city. If we could eventually find some way to defeat that, that would be most helpful. There is oxygen in here as well. Wasn't there... Wasn't there a piece of text saying that there's oxygen ahead? Yes, this is that cave. Alright, so we have made it. I've started to understand the point of the death loop. I thought it was like a sort of annoying artificial difficulty at first, but now I'm realizing that the more you learn, the more quickly you're able to do everything. Like, it's not like it actually takes that long to do anything in this game. It's just a matter of coming through and being able to... Being able to use your knowledge essentially as leveling up. Even though there's no direct upgrades in this game, it's almost like you, the player, are guaranteed to be getting better because you're learning all this information. Which, in a game that values information as much as the characters do, that's actually a really great way to get across that mechanic. Just gotta make our way through here. Seems like we still have time. We've just gotta hurry. Now we have the Overlook, we'll light that up. We have the Stepping Stone District, light that up. We have, what do we just light? High Energy Lab Trailhead. And the Eye Shrine District, which is where we came from the first time around. You stay where you are, y'all. Look at it. Kind of funny that looking around can cause me to accidentally lose my place, but... Wow, this goes way down. Alright, we've got to make it to this thing. Start low, work high. Is there anything here? Just an elevator. Uh, maybe there's even stuff beneath this that we can access. I'm exploring this because we may not be able to come back. In fact, it's highly probable that we won't be able to come back the way we came. Stepping Stone Cave. Maybe this will lead us to the Anglerfish Ruins? Oh, we're going down. This place will fill more quickly than I'd probably like. We've got to get going. Accidentally walked off the end instead of jumping. Thought I saw something over there. Yes, lights ahead. Ooh, traversing this is actually kind of fun. But I'm grateful to be moving up again. Another door. Are we playing the fossil fish game tonight? I fed the fossil fish a new lantern. If you go to Stepping Stone Cave, the entrance to the fossil fish cave is easy to see now. Gratitude, Solanum. It's good you're small enough to climb in through the hole at the anglerfish overlook. I'm still small enough. You won't be for long. Mom and Dad are tall, 
So you and I will be tall too. So through there, that is the way to go. I hope it's not too late. This is more stuff off to the side of the main city. So we've got to go back down into the cave. Which has now rapidly filled up. I think we need to come back another time again. Now what else is there for us to see? We could come back to here and we'll have plenty of time to try and figure out how we're getting through to that other thing. So in order to get into here, I believe, yeah, that's the way we wanted to go. We'll just need to remember our orientation. So we go here, and it's over here, probably in this corner through the house. Yep. Here, a scroll, yes. Information. Who's been computing shuttle trajectories to the sun station? Don't worry. The station is in such a low stellar orbit, we've constructed a different, safer way to travel there from Ash Twin. Ooh. Interesting lead. It's a purely theoretical exercise on my part, Yarrow. Who doesn't love computing a good low stellar orbit shuttle trajectory? Pi, I look forward to working with you, but I'm also relieved it will be easy to return to Ash Twin regularly. That would be Pi. I told her we wouldn't be traveling there by shuttle, and that the sun station doesn't even have a landing pad. But she said she knew. Okay. So there is, on Ash Twin, a way to get there. We don't actually have to catch up with it like I attempted to do earlier in the series. And it's like we observed before. If there's any chance for survival of our species, and survival of the Nomai even, it'll be within the core of Ash Twin. Is there anything else we can see here before we get moving? Doesn't look like it. Alright, so what are our goals right now? We have to get back on the next loop down into that cavern so we can find the entrance to the anglerfish lair. And we also have to try and get into this thing, which we can do from the Sunken City. Uh, so that's the difficulty with Ember Twin, is that your time runs out long before your time runs out. Oh, I'm only just now realizing. When we lock onto something, those arrows that appear, that's our relative velocity in that direction. I can't believe it took me this long to notice. Get down as quickly as possible. Get into the shortcut first instead of going through the caves. Let's get our suit on. Because we are going to want as much time with this anglerfish as possible. Because figuring out what its nature is is going to be important to finally getting over to Dark Bramble for the first time. You know, when I first saw this game, when I first took off, I was thinking, how is this game as many hours as online guides say it is? The answer is, there's a whole lot to do on each planet. I mean, I, there's nothing physically stopping me from going to Dark Bramble right now. It's my own trepidation about what I saw in the depths of the seed on our own planet. That's what's keeping me from moving. Ah, wait. There is a door directly down here. High energy lab. This goes all the way up. Okay, we'll take this one first since it's the lowest. This is where that cable ends up. It's the thing that's powering the city. That's what that device does. Probably uses solar energy. It's not a receiver or transmitter, it's a giant solar panel. Let's use this as our guide while acknowledging the fact that there could be goodies hidden in the shadows. Uh, 
How are we getting through here, though? Yeah, come on! How do, how do I get through? This is gonna fill up, and then I can walk through, but that's a waste of time. No, it just pushes me straight down. What am I supposed to do here? Unless there's another way. But I suppose we might as well, while we're here, go for our original goal. Also, very annoying how easy it is to turn you guys off by mistake. So I just realized, no wonder this resembled the Stepping Stones. It is the Stepping Stones, it just looked completely different when it wasn't full of sand. Now, apparently there's supposed to be lights through here, which can access the Anglerfish's cavern. But where are they? Nope. Let me back up. Another day, another death, this time via cactus. I accelerated that one. I'm done waiting around for the sun to explode to restart my runs. This is literally like a minute after spawning in. And we've got to figure out just where that entrance is to the anglerfish cavern. That's literally all I want from this episode. It said that a new lantern was up and that it should be easy to spot now. What we're in here, this is the bottom of the Stepping Stone Caves. But how do we get there? Well, I mean, look, they did say they put a new lantern in. Which, or at least I think that's what it said. Right? Yeah, they gave it a new lantern. That actually, so it would be out by now, right? Like, I'm thinking in gameplay terms, but, like, realistically, it wouldn't still be there if they had to replace it even in their time. But, you know what I'm thinking about? Even, uh, hang on, even when we were up there, our scout emitted a glow. Alright, this is wild, but maybe this will work. This is Anglerfish Overlook, right? I hope it's not too late in this playthrough already. This is the Overlook. What if we go boop? And then... Yes, yeah, straight down the throat, okay. Okay, I think I'm seeing what this has got to be. Just got to make sure not to accidentally lose it. No, you don't. No, you don't. I do see the glow. Oh, and it also marks the scout on our map. So we can use it as a marker as well as a scout. Yes! Oh, we had to go up! If we can go up, if it'll let us... We're actually pretty low on fuel as well. We gotta drop down to this, build up completely. Uh, we wanna bounce and rock it up. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, yes! Yes, okay, we did it. Uh, now realizing we can also use this to illuminate areas that we need, okay. The scout in my mind has just become a trillion times more useful. You were all here whenever whatever happened, happened. Whoever was it when we ended last time is the anglerfish. Rule change. The anglerfish now has to wear a blindfold. And do not peek. Why are we changing it? It's too hard if you can't see anything. Aunt Pie says real anglerfish are blind. So you have to wear a blindfold. The rule stands, so they're blind. Rule update. It's okay if younger kids don't wear the blindfold when they're it. The rest of us will still wear it for scientific accuracy and to make the game more even. <laughs> this sounds exactly like a childhood game conversation. The rest of us, the little fish, line up against one wall. When the anglerfish says go, the little fish sneak across to the other side. If the anglerfish catches you, you're eaten. Last little fish to be caught is the new anglerfish. 
The old anglerfish gives the new anglerfish the blindfold and becomes a little fish. Okay. So that's what we learned, that they're blind. Maybe we can use that in some way. There is also something at the top of the chamber, an elevator it looks like. That's the entrance where the Nomai arrived. That's the overlook. Okay, look, let's land on your head. There we go. What do you see? Oop. <laughs> Please don't plummet back directly into me. All right, our best chance at this is going to be if we climb up on top of this thing. I don't like how I can't see it there. Woo! Wait. What is this place? Have we been here before? Anglerfish study. Yes, yes, this is exactly what I was hoping for. The long growth protruding from its head is bioluminescent. Perhaps it used this growth to attract prey. Allure? That was a little hard to figure out, but I will say, I really like the idea that we essentially had to light the anglerfish again in order to find it. Visually, the specimen appears to be of the same species as the anglerfish in Dark Bramble. We don't believe it originated from this planet. This anglerfish's digestive tract suggests death by starvation. An update. Melloray, while I was here making sketches of the anglerfish, I observed the children I saw earlier playing here again. They've added a rule to their game that incorporates our research. It's wonderful. That is so cute that they're actually acknowledging this. I'm entirely delighted. It's never too early to appreciate biology. I always laugh at the things they say, and it's one of those like, ha ha, oh, I made myself sad moments. Back up onto the surface. Another shortcut down into the city. Not too far from the beacon. I'll be honest, though. I am more than a little bit spooked by the idea of... actually encountering one of those things in the flesh. Alright, just in time to refuel. And let's head over to Ash Twin and see what it has in store. We really haven't done a whole lot with Ash Twin. It's always been there. We've run along and seen some things along its bridge around the equator. But we've yet to actually, you know, fully investigate it. We went inside that castle, but have we landed on any of the Ash Twins' towers? I think we might have early in the series, like episode 2. But honestly, like, for how close it's been, I feel like it's really been neglected. Yeah, it doesn't seem like there's really anything to this besides the elevator itself. Alright, let's continue looking around. Maybe there's more to be found in that castle. Look at that. The visuals in this game never fail to be awe-inspiring. I think I'm going to do one more run of this thing just to see what's here, if there's anything I missed. But first, let's have a look at our log to see what's new. Because sometimes it tells me things I've already learned in a way that makes me understand it better. Okay, so it's the orange that says there's more to explore here. But then, what does the green mean? Remember, somewhere on this rock, there's a way to safely travel to the sun station. We can't get inside this one. That's the tricky thing. Maybe from further down there could be something? Yeah, definitely from further down. There's an elevator leading up. Ooh, boy. 
Ooh, yes, there we go. That platform that we saw on the way in. There we go. Sometimes you just gotta try some acrobatics. Oh, wait. Have we been here already? Ow, ow, ow. Come on, come on. All right, if we go down to the bottom, we sort of get a little bit of a reprieve. And then we can jump up and try again. We're basically guaranteed. Oh, there's no way to do this. Come on. So if we come here right away, we've never come to Ash Twin right away before. It seems like sand is entirely covering the planet. And when I had looked at it before and didn't see the thing, I had assumed that it was because of just an LOD bug. But it seems like at a certain point, it actually will start the sand exchange. Wait, so maybe... Okay, we gotta figure out where we're going and how we're gonna do this. How do we know when you're gonna start? Unless the fact that you're not doing it right now is a bug. Incidentally, we could also see the bottom of the canyon on Ember Twin if we were to do this that way. Let's fly around and see if we can't find that platform. Because maybe we were only even supposed to get on there when the sand reached that low point. Like, maybe we weren't expected to jetpack down to it. Maybe it actually wanted us to, well, just kind of walk in. I'm just kind of buzzing around because I don't remember which tower it was. I think there's two on this planet. But I have to say, I really love the idea. It's so creative of these two planets parallel to each other that just kind of exchange mass back and forth. Presumably they do this cyclically and don't actually... Well, we don't get to see it in action because the sun's going to go supernova. But that's what they do, especially since the Nomai talked about this phenomenon. It's not like it's a new thing that's starting now. Okay, no time, no time, no time. Get out. Nope, let me out, let me out, let me out. I always get caught on this thing. Alright, forget the fact that it's gonna go down. This in. And no. See, I was thinking... Ow! 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 I'm, I'm gonna die. I was thinking maybe, like, the sand will be high enough to cover this. Ow, 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 ow. I think one more hit and I'm dead. I can't even move now. It won't let me move. Ugh, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes, 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 ah, oh, finally. All right, so my theory was wrong, but I guess I managed to make it through anyway. Here's another one of these devices. We've seen a couple of these. Now we can open you from the other side. But what does that actually do for us? I'm confused. Well, besides enable us to watch this thing pass directly over us, Okay, so, like, I don't get it. Why all that effort? My ship is currently on Ember Twin because it got taken up because I left it there. I'm gonna explore what's in this tower, but that is so annoying. Why? I can't imagine what we were supposed to see in there. Yep. No, wait. We must have been here already because I recognize that suit on the ground. But I don't recognize this. Now you, we need to find a spot to bring you. I'll put it over there, but what happens if we try to hide in here? This thing is damaged. Uh, this might be our only hope. Hope this works. Only just. Okay. Well, let's get over there then. Find out what these writings are. Might as well get something out of this trip. 
Friends visiting from the Hanging City. We are planning the Ash Twin project at the High Energy Lab on Ember Twin's equator. I became lost on Ember Twin. My gratitude that Raimi found me. But the High Energy Lab is the building with the large solar panels. I'm surprised I didn't see it. I imagine our otherwise immensely clever Kanoi would lose his own head if it weren't anatomically impossible. Alright. Didn't really learn too much we didn't already know. This is like parting the Red Sea. <laughs> Look, there's our ship. That's hilarious. I could actually make the jump, but who knows if I'd even be able to fly it out of there. Alright. Sun Tower offline as of 1 minute 47 seconds ago. All other towers are online. Alright, but what does that mean? Are there more rings here that we can access? You weren't up when I was here a second ago. Ah, but we can actually reach underneath this structure, which is kind of interesting. I don't know if we'll be able to do anything with that, though. Yeah, I'm starting to find that we're getting, like, diminishing returns out of each expedition. Which is why I think... Hang on, let's wait for this to pass. Man, that is so loud. What I was getting at is, now that we have the information we came for, I think we need to head to Dark Bramble. Because exploring these same planets, even though I know there is more to find here, I just feel like I'm getting diminishing returns out of each life, and I'm going to be cutting more and more, and essentially wasting more and more time. I mean, I feel like I'm not really making the same density of discoveries at all in this part as in previous parts, so I think that's what we've got to do. I think Dark Bramble is our next bet. And from the look of things, it might be our first time actually encountering hostile fauna. Until then, if you like this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more creepy and comfy content. If you have any ideas for other videos you think I should do, the best place to suggest that will be at the Discord, which I will link in the description. If you want to try this game out for yourself, that link will also be in the description. And as always, I will see you in the next one.